The GroupWise 18.2 release includes an updated web solution that we think you will really love. The feature set is still being developed, but it will be the successor to the traditional web access solution. This new solution has been built from the ground up with a focus on making a smooth and consistent interface whether you are on a PC, Mac, phone, or tablet. The web interface will scale to fit your device while maintaining easy, intuitive access to mail, calendar, notes, and contacts. Best of all, it's easy to configure and deploy because it's all containerized using Docker. If you are unfamiliar with the concept of containers, that's okay. For now, think of a container as the next step beyond virtualized servers. A container image is a bundle of code that is basically self-contained. It includes all of the code needed to run. They are easy to start and easy to update, and I'll show you how. Let's get started. I have a SLES 12 SP4 server here, and the first thing I need to do is install container support. To do that, I've opened YAST, then click Add System Extensions or Modules. From this list, I find the Containers module as shown here. Follow the prompts to finish the install, and we are good to move on to the Docker pieces. Since I'm not currently logged in as root, I'll add the sudo prefix to the command zipper install docker. Let that run to completion, then follow up with sudo systemctl enable docker, so that docker will automatically start following server reboots. To manually start it now, enter sudo systemctl start docker. One final command is sudo usermod-g docker bert. This command lets my user bert run docker commands. Uh, this is for those of you who obey the best practices and avoid using the root user. Just one quick note, you may need to log out and log back in for this change to take effect. To confirm that everything is ready, I'll run a test container application with this command, docker run hello-world. What happens here is my local Docker environment reaches out to the Docker Hub repository and pulls down the image called Hello World and runs it. The Hello World program is simple. All it does is pull down this text information that lets us know Docker is working. Now that the Docker environment is set up and enabled and confirmed to be working on this server, we are ready to launch the new web image. Now there are actually two parts to the process and each part has two commands. It can be a bit confusing so I want to explain what we need to do then I'll walk you through actually doing it. Here are the first two commands to run. These are the pull commands that will download first the configuration utility and then the actual web container image. Once those are pulled it's time to actually run them. Here's the command needed to generate the config file. The docker command is run. The dash it means interactive terminal. The dash v is a volume command. It specifies where the completed configuration file will be placed and also where the docker image will store it while it's being built. The dash e or environment variables specify where to find your groupwise admin service as well as where to find the POA that is running the SOAP interface. And finally, the image name that we already pulled. When you run the command, you will be prompted to enter your groupwise admin password. There are a couple of things I need to mention here. The first is that you will need at least one document viewer agent configured in your groupwise system, at least if you want to have images rendered for your web users. I'll include links to videos on configuring a DVA in the description below if you need them. You will also need to have SSL enabled on that DVA or the new web solution will not be able to connect. Your DVA configuration is part of the information collected when you run the configuration utility. Here is the command to actually spin up the web service and I think it's a good idea to dissect it. Docker run is the command. The dash D is for detached mode so it runs in the background. The dash RM will remove the image once it's been stopped. This will prevent an error if you try to start it up again with the same name a second time. The dash V is still a volume command. It takes this path on the host machine and mounts it inside the running image at this path. 
The config file we built earlier needs to be in the path you specify here. The name switch allows you to manipulate the image by the name and it's much easier than the lengthy numbers that are the default. The fully qualified domain name we want is for this machine. And we do need to provide a valid DNS server so that the running container can find what it needs. The dash P publishes the ports for the web surfaces and you can redirect them here if needed. This last volume command is optional but allows you to mount third-party certificates into the image if desired. If you have certs you want to use, put them in this path on the host machine and they'll be mounted to this path inside the running image. I think that's more than enough lecture. Let's see it work in the real world. Here I am on my CELES 12 server. I'm logged in as root just to make it easier on myself. Another trick I've learned is to create a folder for storing everything related to this web solution. I call it GWWeb. Here you can see a commands file. Let me open it up and show you what I've created. Because these commands are a bit long and complicated, I find it much easier to copy and paste them rather than risk typos by entering them manually every time. As you can see, I've already filled in the parts of the commands that are specific to my system. Now all I have to do is copy and paste these into my terminal window. I'll start with the pull commands. Now to actually run the config image, and once it's completed, I should have that config file in the folder I specified. I'll know the command worked because I can see the file has been created. And now we are ready to actually execute the run command to spin up the web image. How do we know if things are working? There are a couple of things to check. The first is to run a Docker PS. This command will list out any and all Docker processes. And here you can see that GWWeb is running. This is the name we gave it, and the reason we wanted to name it was so that we can manipulate it. If you issue a Docker stop and that name, it'll shut it down. I'm just going to take advantage of my command history to start it back up. Another test is to output the log from the running image. This is the command to do that. Docker, logs, and the name of the image. In my case, that's GWWeb. When you, what you get here is the output from the current log. Now, I don't know how helpful this will be going forward, but it's a great confirmation that the system is up and running and ready for users to log in. Thanks for watching. We hope you find this information helpful and we hope you enjoy using this new web solution.